It's been quite some time since I last made or uploaded a video to my channel and that is uh, partially or mainly due to uh, lack of time. So I guess I need to prioritize and uh, organize my videos uh, a bit better and part of that might be making slightly shorter videos uh, perhaps. Uh, I do have a lot of new knives to show on the channel. I got some orders both from, from Lamnia and from DLT here the last couple of weeks. So I have knives from uh, Fox Knives, uh, Olamic, Heretic, Bark River and some other makers that I can't remember on top of my head. And there's also this one. This little folder, or well it's not a small folder, it's actually a medium sized to large folder from Mr. Blade. Uh, Probably not the most, you know, known brand or maker out there. Uh, I've known about them for some time since I, you know, frequent Lamnia and I have a pretty good understanding of uh, all the makers that they, uh, they offer. And there was this one knife by Mr. Blade that I was looking to pick up perhaps a year or, may, well, maybe even two years ago. Uh, but it was only, they only had one in stock and I waited a bit too long and it got sold out and after that I, you know, I just, well, I just, you know, forgot about it and focused on other knives, etc. But uh, the last, well, two weeks ago, they had a, um, a pretty heavy discount on, on some models. One being the Cosmo, which is this one, from Mr. Blade. And since I was curious about the maker, about the brand, uh, and I, you know, I wanted to pick something up, uh, buy them and show the channel. So I decided to go with uh, with this one uh, since it was I mean it was a fair price and an interesting knife to make a video of. Uh, so here we are. So let's uh, let's take a look at what we got here. This is the pouch which the knife is uh, delivered in. There is no you know additional box or anything. It's just a pretty standard but you know highly functional pouch. Very much like the one you get from, from V-Knife or from Civivi and some other makers, uh, I bet, as well. Uh, just that they, you know, they stamped it with Mr. Blade and with the website on the backside. I will say that it comes off as a bit, you know, cheap looking when it's, you know, not centered and it's not, you know, straight, etc. It looks like it was just, you know, bang, stamped and there we are. But I will not judge the knife, you know, just from the pouch and I, I do think it is nice when when a knife is in fact uh, delivered with a, with a pouch, even a standard one like this, since it is still, you know, highly functional. Anyway, let's take a look at the, the knife itself. And I'm gonna say right away that this is not, you know, the first time I open up this pouch and take a look at this knife. I've actually been using it uh, quite a bit here uh, since I got it, perhaps, well, let's say it was two weeks ago, uh, around two weeks ago. Uh, so I, I have, you know, given it a, a pretty good go, and I will say that I did manage to to scuff the um, the aluminum handle a little bit here, the anodization. Uh, it's not going to be noticeable, I think, in the video, but I will say it regardless, so that people don't think that it was, you know, uh, delivered this way. Because, well, sometimes things happen when you when you mess around with knives. And I'm also going to say that I have put this knife on a strop pair, so the factory edge is uh, it has been slightly modified. I will say that the knife was sharp out of the box I was gonna say but out of the pouch I did some paper slicing etc like I, I always do but you know since I did play around with it quite a bit and I you know cut some different stuff and paracord etc uh, but I felt like I wanted it to be a bit more slices so I did uh, did do some work on the edge and then I realized wait hey I haven't even done the video yet so this is gonna be well a bit strange so I'm just you know I'm just saying it right now that yes I did modify the edge a little bit to make it slightly more uh, slicey uh, because this knife 
uh, the factory edge is you know it is kind of thick behind the edge and I will say that this is not you know a knife with a big belly that's supposed to be very slicey it's more it has more of a tactical approach and being you know a knife piercing was probably not the right word I can't remember which is the right word but a knife that should be you know thrusted and, and used as a uh, perhaps a, a weapon of sorts anyways let's uh, Let's uh, take a closer look here, but I can see the lamp on my camera saying that the battery is, or the camera is overheating a little bit. So I'm gonna give the camera a rest for a few minutes and then we can actually unbox or unpouch the knife and go into the specs and the, the design and other details. Let's proceed now with the actual, un well not unboxing, but unpouching perhaps. As you can see there are no other contents in here other than the knife in a plastic bag. There is no you know cloth piece of cloth or stickers or anything else it's pretty basic. Not that I really need any more stickers or pieces of cloth or anything like that. Uh, keeping it quite you know plain and simple. You do have place for two folders uh, which is you know always nice. So let's uh, unwrap it here, out of the plastic, and then we can remove that. So here we have the knife itself. Quite a different looking design. I've never seen any folder that looks, well, quite like this one, or not even remotely uh, close at that. Lots of uh, screws all over the place. Uh, would have looked cool as an integral, but would have been quite a a different um, production to it and price as well. So let's uh, start with uh, the most you know prominent design feature of sorts, and that is going to be the pocket clip. So here is the pocket clip. Not very functional right now, since it is not raised. But if we turn the knife around and look at it over here, we have this part here, which is actually a button. Pressing the button here will raise the pocket clip. Small, you know, mechanical feature of sorts. Uh, I've never really seen this done before. Uh, some will say it's, you know, quite gimmicky. Me personally, I'm not really sure what to, uh, what to think. I mean, it is you know, a functional pocket clip, and you will get you know you will get it to stick uh, to your pockets a, a bit, but it is uh, unconventional, I would say. But for those that don't really like pocket clips, well, I mean, you can always remove a pocket clip from your knife, uh, or most of the times, unless the design doesn't really let you to do that. But uh, but I mean, it is it is you know. Interesting, that is what I'm gonna say for now, I believe. An interesting design uh, aspect. So now we got that out of the way. Let's take a look at the knife itself now. So as you can see this knife, well to me it screams tactical for, you know, better or worse depending on, uh, well, who you ask or what you intend to use the knife uh, for. So this, the handle here is made of aluminum uh, anodized uh, red. Uh, the blade here is made out of Sleipner steel and I went with a coated version. There is a non-coated version, a stonewash version, but uh, I went with the with coating because I wanted the extra you know, corrosion resistance that a coating provides uh, the, the blade. And I also think that it looks really good with the, with the emergency or distress uh, dark red and the black blade. But I will say that the satin version looks quite nice as well. Uh, the screws here are all black on the satin version. The screws are, well, satin. Uh, so this is what the knife looks like. Before we go into the actual specs, let's take a look at some of the, the other, you know, design features of sorts, starting with, uh, with the handle. Uh, this is a, I mean, it is a large knife. I wear size 10 in gloves, placing the knife in my hand. Looks like this. 
lots of space. You are definitely not going to run out of space regardless of your uh, your hand size or despite how you know thick your fingers may be. Lots of handle and you know quite comfortable, uh, especially using this grip, uh, which leads us to to the blade a bit here because on the spine here we got a bit of uh, jimping and it's actually I would say it's semi rough. It's not uncomfortable, but you do get some really good you know traction. Um, yeah, the knife will stay in place, uh, pretty much. You get a firm grip. Uh, the blade itself is uh, flat ground. It's got a spear point or spear tip. Uh, I mean, to me, this one screams a little bit, you know, dagger design. Uh, especially since you've got so little bit of belly and it's it's quite a long blade, and it feels like this one was made for, you know, thrusting or you know piercing in some way. Uh, not, you know, really a dedicated uh, slicer or, or kitchen folding knife uh, for that matter. We've got a bit of a swedge grind going on here. Uh, you see the full uh, spine thickness up here with the, with the jimping and then it goes into a bit of a, well, it's a random part here and then it goes into a, a not so fine swedge, but still, you know, making it more uh, designed for, well, piercing, I'd say. Got a small sharpening choil here. Uh, the flipper tab here will work a bit as a guard. Uh, could have been slightly longer to really feel, you know, safe or useful. Uh, I will say that the flipper tab here is uh, the edges are kind of on the sharp side, they are not smoothed or, or rounded in any way, so they are a bit, bit sharp. Um, not a, a super big deal. Uh, and there's no jimping on the, on the flipper tab. Not that it's really necessary. Uh, I'd say this, the opening action is very, you know, it's very snappy. As you can see, it's actually more or less well, not lightning fast would be a bit of an exaggeration, but it is it is snappy. It will deploy quite quite nicely. Um, and the closing action. So this knife has already been broken in a little bit since I've been using it for for you know some time. Uh, but it's not that you know drop shot or fall shot, but it will it will still close nicely. There is no lock stick, no uh, lock rock, no blade play, uh, firm and tight. Lock up, this is a frame lock design and the lock up is about, I'd say, 30 to 40 percent. So this is not going anywhere. This is actually kind of how I prefer uh, the lock up to, to be. I just realized that when I said that I, I wanted the blade coated, I should of course have mentioned the steel used for this blade, and that is Sleipner. And it is not the most you know common steel to, to see, uh, especially not on folders, it is slightly more common on, on certain fixed blades. Uh, I do have you know some experience of Sleipner, only on fixed blades, but I, I do like to, to add a bit of extra corrosion resistance to it. So now I feel like I have, you know, uh, clarified that part aside from it looking, you know, cool or whatever. Anyways, let's take a look here at the, the actual numbers now, shall we? I mean, we've gone over the, the general designs and everything. So, so let's, uh, let's talk numbers now. As I stated in the beginning of this video, this is not a small knife. Uh, it has a total length here of 240 millimeters. So that is uh, 24 centimeter in, in total length. It has a blade length of 104 millimeters, so that's like 10.4 centimeters. Uh, and like I stated, it's got you know not not a lot of belly, so this is you know, like like I said, this is a, a tactical, a very tactical approach to the the blade uh, design, uh, both in terms of you know length and in terms of actual you know shape. We got a closed length here of, I believe, 136 millimeters, so 
six centimeters in closed length. The blade thickness is four millimeters. It's probably only visible here uh, where the jimping is. And then it goes into this, like I mentioned, it goes into a, a swedge grind here. But we do see the, the full four millimeter thickness uh, right there. Uh, the weight of the knife should be, I believe, 129 grams, so 130 grams, give or take some. Uh, not a, a super heavy knife. Um, do we have any like internal milling? There is no internal milling going on here. And in terms of backspacer, well, we do have something that looks Almost, you know, I wonder how they, because this is one solid part, actually, and then they have attached, yeah, I was thinking that it was, you know, that it, it was not a, a complete part like that, huh, never really, you know, thought to look at it, so that is, well, that's actually pretty interesting uh, that we do have this, you know, solid frame and then we have these outer uh, parts uh, screwed onto it. That's actually kind of interesting, I would say. Yeah. Hmm. And I was talking about this, wait. Yeah, it does look, yeah, it is, it's actually kind of hard to see. I, I don't see any lines or anything here, but looking on the inside, I do see some interesting lines going on. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk too much about that, but uh, uh, like I said, there is, this is an interesting, it's an interesting life. It would be kind of interesting to, disassemble it actually uh, but I'm not gonna do that right now but I think I will uh, just because I'm curious about how they put it all together so disassembly well perhaps in the future oh and I will say that uh, looking here uh, what is stated on the knife here it does say Sleipner made in Italy Sleipner being the steel like I mentioned and then it says Mr. Blade, Cosmo, and then by Lion Steel. That is actually kind of interesting. By Lion Steel. So I don't own any knives made by Lion Steel, but they are a, a well known knife maker, uh, both of fixed plates and folders. Uh, so this one is, I mean, Mr. Blade. Yeah, that is the designer of the knife but the one that actually made and manufactured the entire knife and you know did the sharpening and well did I guess everything is indeed uh, Italy based lion steel and that makes me curious about because I, I like I mentioned it was quite thick behind the edge and I wonder if that is something that is you know uh, something in general that we see from lion steel or if it's you know it was something that was requested by Mr. Blade for this specific model and in its you know, intended um, use, so to say. Very curious now to pick up a lion steel blade to see what their you know, factory edges are like. But we, we do know that uh, now that it is made by a, a well-renowned knife company. Uh, that do put out you know high quality stuff as far as I know and have been told and but I, I have no personal experience with lion steel so uh, that much I can that's what I can say so uh, have I forgotten to mention anything now about this knife not that I can you know come up with on the top of my head I mean we've gone over the design the specs the ergos well, pretty much everything I can think of uh, and we're not going to do a disassembly now 
but we can do some some sharpness you know slicing tests etc but that will you know not be really representative of you know the knife out of the box since i did uh, do a little bit of sharpening to it but it, it still it was you know decently sharp out of the box but yeah we can we can do a slicing test uh, regardless Before we proceed with the sharpness test, I thought it would be a good idea to take a look at the centering of the blade. I'm not even sure how I could forget about, you know, doing that when we took a look at, at the knife in close-up and all that. Maybe it's just been too long since I made a, a knife video. But the blade here, it is centered. Uh, it is dead on centered, 100%. Hopefully visible here in the camera so with that out of the way we can now proceed to slice some paper i'm not gonna do a lot of slicing here we're just gonna go with the with the three types of paper with the printing paper, with the magazine paper, and with the newspaper paper. And it's gonna be, well, not a lot of surprises here because, well, I did touch up the edge myself, so I know it is very sharp. But we still should do some slicing. So let's start with the printing paper. Yeah, so slicing uh, printing paper is uh, quite easy. It wasn't perhaps this easy out of the box, but even you know out of the box, it would slice. It would of course slice uh, printing paper. Uh, that much I can say. So let's proceed with uh, with the magazine paper. See? So it is, I guess, pretty safe to say that it will slice uh, the magazine fairly easy as well. And that leaves us with, uh, with the newspaper. Let's see, let's go like this. Oh, poor Moomin. He might not survive this. Oops. Uh. Well, there goes Moomin. So, I, I think it is, you know, somewhat safe to say that a knife will cut um, newspaper paper. moment uh, so um, yeah sliced up um, newspaper and, and I will say that you know the knife out of the box it will it should be able to to slice um, most types of paper 
Um, but perhaps not uh, as fine as I just did here because I did, like I mentioned several times, do some work here on on the edge of the blade. Let's try to summarize it now, shall we? Uh, this knife is probably not for everyone, but it is a very interesting you know, overall design. That I've got to say. And once I modified the edge a little bit, it is now a, a really nice and wicked slicer. But, you know, with the lack of a belly and, you know, with the general design here, uh, well, not your go-to kitchen utility knife, uh, but still, you know, practical in certain uh, scenarios, I would say. So if you've been looking to, uh, to get a blade um, by Mr. Blade, then this could be a good start. Uh, I don't know if all of the blades uh, from, from Mr. Blade are made or manufactured by Lion Steel or if they actually have some, you know, of their own in-house, you know, production of sorts, then it could perhaps be more interesting to get a knife that is, is actually manufactured by uh, Mr. Blade as a, a, a maker, if that is the case. Uh, also, you know, aluminum, some people might feel like it's not as good as titanium and I will be, you know, completely honest and say that I do prefer uh, titanium handles. Uh, I do have some, well, not a whole lot, but, but uh, you know, a handful of folders with aluminum handles. They have never given me any problem or anything. I'm not sure if the anodization of aluminum is as, as you know, tough as the anodization of uh, titanium. I think the processes are done a bit differently. Uh, but, you know, regardless, uh, from, from a user standpoint, there should be no, you know, well, no issues with the handle being aluminum instead of titanium. Uh, the Sleipner steel, I guess most of you don't have a lot of experience with it, especially not in a, in a folding knife. Um, but Sleipner is a, I think it is a, a pretty good steel, um, but very unusual to see it on a, a folding knife. I personally would have preferred, you know, something a bit higher end, like for example, well, S35EN, M390, uh, 20CV, um, well, even S90V, some others, LMAX perhaps, but there is nothing wrong with Sleipner, you know, uh, and I do feel confident with the, with the coating, uh, but even if the blade was not coated, I mean, if you take semi-good care of your knives, you shouldn't have, you know, a lot of issues, uh, and sharpening Sleipner isn't, you know, too bad, uh, a lot easier than sharpening, well, many of those steels that I just mentioned, to be honest. Uh, but, you know, an, an interesting knife, definitely. I think it is on stale still, so I mean, it's if you want to, to pick one up, uh, you know, a bit cheaper, then, well, now could be a good chance, I, I would say. Um, super snappy, but I will say, you know, very tactical, overall tactical approach. Uh, for better or worse, depending on what you, well, what you like and what your preferences are. I'm happy I picked it up because I think it is a, a very, you know, unique knife. And, uh, well, it's, you know, it's good with some variation. It's fun and interesting uh, to see some, some other knives. Uh, and uh, I am very curious about Lion Steel in general now, so I think I'm gonna go for one of their, uh, their folders to see what they are actually like. But this concludes my, well, semi-review, semi-full review of the Mr. Blade Cosmo manufactured by Lion Steel in Italy.